coming up later in this video. But first... Hello everyone, Katobi here. Thank you for joining me for this painting. Today I am going to do another blow with the hairdryer. Ooh, it's going to be fun. Uh, I have talked to the flame and it's not as violent anymore. Uh, yes, I overfilled it. <laughs> uh, it took a while. I actually um, let the flame, uh, let some of the gas out near the uh, oxygen sensor, uh, CO2 sensor. So I'm going to just show you what that sounds like when it goes off. So if, if there was an issue, um, it'll peak and beep. So I'm just going to put a little bit of gas near it. And give that a moment, you'll hear a beep beep. So had there been an issue with the amount of gas um, I'm releasing, then you would have heard that beep. But we're all good. Um, that might beep again in a moment once it relaxes itself. So what I'm going to do is um, I've got a, a variety of colours. We've got red, we've got um, sunflower. You know I love cramming those sunflowers into the bottles. We've got our gold with um, different micas in it. It's got mica 2, mica 3, mica 17. If you're not sure what those numbers mean, check in the description uh, for the link on how, to mix my, how I mix my mica powders. Um, we've got... What do you call that one? I'd call that one... Hmm... Let's call it fawn, maybe? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna go with that, it's not fawn. Uh, it's definitely, but it's something similar. Uh, then we've got olive. Uh, so that's a special olive that I used for my sister's uh, painting. It's got some mica in it. And then we've got really dark, like, um, I, I guess you could say very dry olives. So it's sort of like an olivey um, Pastel. No, it's not. So anyway, I like these colors. I like them. Uh, I'm going to do it on a white base because I believe a lot of these are going to be very dark. I've tried to pick a couple of colors that will lighten the whole thing up. Um, I am going to do a circle and I'm going to blow the circle out. So before we get started, just have to do this. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all taking care of yourselves and remembering to be kind, kind as as kind as you can to others. It's always good to be kind to others. And for no trying to get back, you know, something like, oh, I was kind to you, so you've got to be kind to me. How about sometimes we just try and make the world a better place just by giving a little kindness into the world. You know what it feels like to have a little bit of kindness when it's uh, given to you. Sometimes people are just kind um, to be kind. I know I try and be. I also know that I fail at times trying to be kind. Um, but, you know, as long as it's something we try and work at each day. Ah, that one came out well. Then I think that's a positive positive thing for the whole world. All right, let's pour out the base. You can see I've already got something in my paint that I'm gonna to have to deal with in a moment. Okay, that is a nice thin layer. Let's just fix this up. Now I am collecting up my paints when I can, when I need to. Sometimes there's just not enough wastage to be able to collect them. And then other times like now, oh, there's so much wastage. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with all the wastage yet. I can use it to help make my other paints move easier. Um, there's a few different things. If you haven't checked the description section of the video, um, give that a look over. You'll notice that you can support the channel by going to my buy me a coffee and you can buy me some um, some brushes if you'd like um, to help me out. You can do a monthly um, pledge or you can uh, do a one-off. It's a really nice way to help support me. 
but I do appreciate anybody who wants to help out that way. It is not at all, not in any way, a requirement. I just really need to tell people about it because if you don't know it's there um, and you did want to support me and you didn't know, then really it's my fault that I don't tell you about it. So yeah, check in that description. You can also find my merch there. I thought we were going to behave ourselves, Flame. I see a little bit of something's fallen in. Okay. Of course, if you do pick up one of my paintings, most likely you will get some cat hair. You're welcome. My cats want to make sure that you're included in what we do here. <laughs> All right, I'm going to uh, do this one a little bit differently. I'm going to take from either side and work my way into the center. Oh, that's right. These have ball bearings in them. You have defeated me, ball bearing. You know what? That is not a terrible circle. It's not a great one, but it's not a terrible one. <laughs> oh, this one looks clean, actually. I think it's clean. We'll find out in a second. No ball bearings in here. I'm expecting this to have an earthy autumn kind of feel because here in my part of the world, um, we're finishing up our summer soon. I think you'll notice that some of my colors have actually been very fiery and the like. Um, so while I'm doing these, it, um, it's been warm weather. And uh, yeah, we are going to be moving into the autumn soon. So that's the, uh, the palette that I'd like to use. Plus, I really did enjoy doing my sister's artwork. The, um, the two amazing commission works. If you haven't seen that, those videos, um, there'll be a link in the description. And uh, same with my mica, so go check that out. And uh, you'll see how I did her painting. Oh, yes. You know what? That didn't come out to a bad circle, did it? Not too bad. Not terrible. Oh, shoot. And clean. There we go. Oh, 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 is that hair? No, it's just a ton of bubbles. They don't teach me. Are we going to behave ourselves? Okay. Oh, yeah. Beautiful job with popping bubbles. You know, had anybody ever told me, later on in life, Katobi, when you're an adult, you'll be popping bubbles with fire. I would have been like, yeah! And then when I saw what I'm doing, I would have been like, oh, that's not what I was expecting I'd be up to. Blow this out.
I wish I had gotten a little bit more over there. We'll, uh, we'll give it a heave ho with the breath. <laughs> yeah, yes. Spread that petal out. I love it. It's beautiful. Interesting that one part. I don't want to stretch it, but I am going to push just a little bit off that edge. Rocking. Rocking. Okay, I don't want to do any more. That is beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. I love it. Cat hairs. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, flame. It's behaving. You know what, I wouldn't be disappointed at all if you had told me I was popping paint bubbles. When you're an adult, you'll be popping paint bubbles with fire. Yeah, that sounds awesome. There is some lovely pink lacing going on with this. I will bring you in. Well, thank you for watching this portion of the video. The next time you see this beautiful artwork, it'll be dried. And then the next time after that you see it, it will be varnished. You only see it lacquered. Remember to check the description for how I mix my mica powder video, if you want to know the numbers and what they mean. And check the description to see how I made my other two pictures from my sister using this colour palette, or part of this colour palette. Um, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in a few moments once this is dry. <laughs> This has been a fun, sneaky project to do. This is for my sister. Um, I promised her a third painting once she had framed the uh, original two that she had um, me commission for her. So I've done, or she commissioned for me to do for her. Did I words properly? Probably not. So my sister got me to make her two other paintings. If you haven't seen, uh, link in the description, link in the, uh, sorry, link cards there, link in the description, check them out. Th this is gorgeous. There is gold throughout different parts of it, um, so that when you move around the gold catches, there's also just a tad of mica, which uh, gives a little bit of a, a shine every now. Um, you can see the, the red throughout here. Okay, there's like a red. And then you've got the beautiful lacing throughout. Uh, some of the lacing is covered by the gold um, lacing throughout here. And then you've got these wisps of color here, almost like coral, um, it's, it's really pretty. To me, whilst making it, I had to think of the first two pictures that I made for her and make a piece that would interact with both of them. So that's why we have the lacing through here um, and here. It's to blend uh, the very first, the darker picture um, with this one. And also then you've got the white, which uh, frames to the other one. Now my father, he's seen this. 
my sister's father, <laughs> um, he, he's seen this and he really likes this area the most. And down here, he's not a big fan of this centerpiece. And I get that. It's meant to be provocative. It's meant to be thought uh, provoking where you look at it and you're like, wait, everybody puts the paint in the center and I've deliberately devoided the center of the paint. Uh, my sister tells me that when people come to visit her and they look at the artwork, uh, everybody's got a different opinion and uh, a different outlook and, and viewpoint of looking at the artwork, um, that the artworks that I've already provided her. And uh, she likes to take one of them out in the light because they're like, oh, it's dull, it's boring. And then she shows it around the light. They're just like, oh, oh my God, that's so pretty. <laughs> so um, look, it's exciting to, to make art for people. She doesn't know she's getting this one. This is a complete secret. Uh, I'm sending this one, once I've recorded this, directly to the framer. They're going to frame this for her. So she'll have three in the exact same type of frame. And uh, she'll get a phone call saying, hey, your painting's here to pick up. To which she'll be like, the hell are you talking about, man? Uh, so hopefully she's either seen this video by then or uh, she gets to see it afterwards <laughs> and I'll no doubt get a uh, couple of <laughs> text messages from her telling me how much of a naughty boy I am. But uh, I did promise her a, uh, a third painting and uh, I wanted to gel the two together. And I think I've really captured that in this. I can't wait to show you the close up. Like I said, I will have to re-record the flyover. When I looked at the footage, it was blue. Uh, which is not a good look. Let me uh, try and replicate that for a second. Yeah, it looked like that. Uh, the unfortunate thing is I did do the flyover with it unvarnished. This next flyover will be varnished. Um, I've been editing my, my flyover gear and how I do my procedure for the flyovers. Yeah, so yeah, it looks, it really does look that blue. It's ridiculous. It's very bright. Remember, don't look down, don't look into the light. So I'm loving it, I, I do. Um, I'll show you a close up of it and um, then yeah, you'll get to see the flyover and then the time lapse of me creating this one. Thank you so much for watching this portion of the video. Remember to keep on commenting, I appreciate you. And sis, if you're watching, yes, I know I'm a naughty boy. I love you so much.
Thank you.